Hey, hello everyone. Welcome back to QNF Mac Podcast from our headquarters here in Taipei. I'm Razon and here today with us are our senior project manager, product manager David and uh, PM Sam. And today we're going to talk about the TS2888X. It's a big NAS and it's uh, AI ready-made. You can use it for deep learning, for inference, and uh, it has huge storage and uh, it has a lot of power for you to access its services. So probably to announce the topic for today, I'll just go quickly to the slides and see why are we talking that, about the TS2888X. For today we are focusing on 2D and 3D rendering, I suppose, and computing acceleration of this massive NAS. And uh, yeah, we divided in these three parts. First we will have an introduction and then after the multimedia application, and later on also we have some uh, demos, video demonstration about the TS2888X with the VPU accelerator and we'll see real time how it works and integrates with it. Yeah. So, yeah. I think, uh, yeah, just like um, uh, we have introduced the 2888X before and uh, before we are talking about how to leverage the 2888X as uh, AI NAS. But actually, I think 2880 AIs can do more, more than just, not, not just only focus on the AI. So let's talk about uh, um, uh, computing power. And actually, con uh, I think computing power is the foundation of uh, the data science. Many, many high technology, they require very powerful, high computing power machine to help them achieve a lot of uh, uh, jobs. Just so like uh, we talk about the AI, of course, you leverage the GPU or VPU for the computing. And also like um, many, many uh, 2D or 3D video uh, or, or, or image designers, they need rendering that will use the uh, computing power, right? And also uh, data compression or encryption, of course, you need CPU or a lot of um, uh, adapters for acceleration. Okay, so uh, I think uh, that's the reason uh, we created 2888X. Uh, it delivers a lot of computing power. And we can also see uh, uh, there are a lot of tools help us to do the acceleration. Just like uh, uh, GPU, mm -hmm. VPU, or FP uh, FPGA car, those kind of v uh, PCI adapters. So uh, sometimes CPU cannot handle all the job or all the tasks. So you need some this kind of tools. So uh, here uh, you, you have to be aware of the uh, specifications here. Just like all those high speed uh, uh, PCI adapters, they re require higher bandwidth in the PCI bus. And some of them uh, support just like multiple PCI adapter to, uh, adapters to uh, improve the uh, performance a lot. You can like two times or three times more performance compared with single uh, adapters. So uh, let's have a quick overview of the TS2880X. Uh, we have introduced uh, more details before, right? Yeah. So today just uh, just like a recap. Okay. Have our customers to 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 uh, see the specifications again. So uh, this is the reason we say it's a uh, it, it's a very very mm, high computing storage because we equip with Intel Xeon W processor can up to eighteen cores and support up to five hundred twelve gigabyte memory and also we uh, provide eight PCI slots. Uh, it supports can up to uh, four GPU uh, adapters. Of course, we provide uh, extra PCI power connectors for those uh, GPU cars. So, uh, in the other side of the NAS, you can see the storage. Uh, before that, it was uh, computing. Very good CPU, a lot of PCI slots to, to, for our customers to install a lot of uh, um, PCI adapters. And this part is about storage. We uh, provide uh, 28 base, includes a uh, 3.5-inch SATA hard drive base and uh, also 16 2.5-inch SATA SSD base. And we have four super high-speed U.2 SSD port. It supports PCIe Gen 3x4 each port. So you have capacity, also the performance in the storage part. And this is the front view of our uh, 2888X. 
uh, we have a lot of fan here because of the computing. Uh, uh, compu higher computing sometimes also means higher heat. Higher yeah. capacity means a lot of uh, hard drive, also means a more heat, right? So uh, in the design, we provide our customers uh, 12, uh, 12, cent uh, 12 centimeter uh, smart fan control yeah. for the system. So the larger size fan means uh, lower noise. Okay, so at the front side, you can see a lot of, uh, uh, there are six uh, 12 centimeter smart fan at the front side. Of course, we have a power button, uh, front side USB port, and also LCM. And the special part is we provide uh, four wheels at the bottom of the, the NAS. You try to imagine that you have four loaded hard drives with this big box, so it, it must be very heavy. And it's ideal solution for uh, like in the office, there are several different teams. They also need, they need to share this NAS. Yeah. So uh, they can just push the NAS around in the office. Yeah. Very convenient. Convenient, yeah. And this is the real view. We provide 2000 watt power supply in this model because we need to offer extra power for those GPU cars. And also four gigabit LAN four USB 3.0 port and four USB 2.0 and two tanky base T LM ports there. Okay, so that was just a quick overview recap of our TS2880X. So let's talk about what uh, TS2880X can do for the multimedia, okay? Okay, uh, these are maybe pictures, photo or images. So I think you must know uh, there is a car over there and that is absolutely not the Real. photo, yeah. right? Because no car with the transparent yeah. stuff. But when you look at the rest of those pictures, mm -hmm. it's really hard to distinguish. They are uh, just like a mm, real photo yeah. or I feel like I'm having a really difficult time to see which one is the animated one and which one is not, especially the on the right. Yeah, those, uh, those buildings right. looks <laughs> not, the type of the building doesn't look real. Yeah. But actually it looks like a picture, right? Yeah, the quality looks uh, like a real photo. Yeah, so I'm telling you, uh, those three, uh, six pictures, they are, they are not real. Uh, none of them are no, okay, not no. even the one with the windows? No, no, no. no. They are drawing by the 3D or 2D software. Okay. Okay. So uh, they use a technology that is rendering technology. Actually, uh, at the beginning, there is uh, there are only maybe just wild friends over there, and according to the 2D or 3D uh, rendering technology, actually it comes from a lot of computing power. Okay. Those technologies include like a shading, texture mapping, or uh, re uh, refraction, a lot of stuff mixed together to generate those uh, looks like real pictures, yeah. okay? So uh, we have our PMSM uh, here. Uh, we are going to introduce you how to leverage the TS2880S as a uh, render farm, right? Yeah. Okay, so here is our PMSM. All right. Okay, uh, thank you, Davey. Uh, Okay, in the past few years, uh, QNAP uh, provide a lot of classic model like uh, S71T, uh, 1282T, or CCD85T for the video editors. They all have uh, uh, high speed uh, data access I, uh, for IO rewrite, and they also have the uh, SSD cache or SSD tiering uh, technology. And also provide a full bandwidth of the uh, network. So no, for all of the editor, no matter uh, they use uh, Adobe Premiere or Apple Final Cut Pro or DaVinci Resolve, they all can use our NAS to share their footage, share their material, and they can uh, use the share folder to do the online editing work. But. This year, we announced the uh, TS2888. Uh, yeah, it's a huge storage. So 
it could be the uh, one stop solution for whole video uh, pro production workflows. Uh, from the beginning, uh, after you shot the footage, uh, you can save the raw footage into the NAS folder, and the editor can do the uh, first cut, rough cut, or direct cut, and also save back to the uh, footage share folders. Mm -hmm. Then for some editor, if they want to do like the uh, virtual effect or animations, uh, our um, TS our NAS can provide the virtual machine to be your render node. Mm -hmm. And after that, uh, the editor can do more editor uh, cut or add the audio, uh, do the color corrections, adjust the lighting or white balance. And uh, when everything was done, uh, you can export your final product to another share folders. You, all of the uh, data can save in TS2888 and also it provides a SAS connection uh, you can plug in one SAS, SAS card, card and uh, uh, do the LTO tab archive or Blu-ray archive mm -hmm. and also we provide a hybrid backup sync is an app can help you to backup all your data to remote NAS or cloud and when you uh, use uh, uh, this NAS to be the uh, random forms, actually uh, it have one benefit, can help you dynamically configure uh, your random power uh, as your uh, project requirement. For example, uh, the left side uh, is a, a regular scenario. Uh, the user may uh, create three or four virtual machines with uh, uh, four to six core uh, CPU power and some do the 3D rendering, some do the uh, 2D rendering. But one day, if you got uh, 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 one big case and need more more rendering power for 3D effect, and uh, you can assign all CPU code to the one yeah. virtual machine and uh, suspend others. So the idea of the render form is just like um, before we mentioned those. Uh, we talk about those pictures, right? Yeah. And when you do the rendering in your uh, local workstation, that will consume your no matter CPU or GPU in lo your local station. And if your workstation is not that powerful, you cannot do anything yeah. because it is rendering it takes maybe hours or one day, right? So the re the idea of the render form is you you you, you leave the job to a remote server, okay? Mm -hmm. So we create a lot of virtual machines in the uh, 2888X to do the render, uh, render job. So your workstation can still keep uh, drawing your wireframe doing all the all the tasks. Okay. okay. So we will have two live demo. One is uh, 3D rendering. We use uh, one famous uh, software is uh, Cinema 4D for 3D rendering. Uh, and uh, one is Adobe After Effects is to do the uh, 2D rendering. So we're to the demo. Yes. Yep. All right. Let's show the viewers what we have here. All right. Okay. Uh, here is my workstations. And first, uh, we already log in our uh, TS twenty eight eighty eight. Okay. So here is our uh, virtualization stations, and the user can directly config their CPU code in the uh, virtual machine setting here. Okay. Yeah. okay. So this is the virtualization station, the app. You yes. can actually, if you don't have it, you can get it from the app center. Yes, yes. right. All right. Okay. Uh, this is two virtual machines, one with the uh, uh, Cinema 4D team random client. Okay. So the screen right now is the uh, a virtual machine desktop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there are two. Launch, uh, and one is running the uh, Cinema 4D, right? Yes. Another one is running the 2D. Uh, Adobe after after, after effect. effect. Okay. Right. Yeah. So right now it is the Cinema 4D. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in the uh, virtual machine, uh, we install a render. You can think that it's just like a render server in the virtual machine, and 
right now uh, you are seeing here it, uh, Cinema 4D is running on your workstation. Okay, so Sam is demoing how to do the render from the local and so ask, uh, uh, no, actually ask the virtual machine to do in the render. Okay, here you can see uh, two PCs online. One is a local machine for this virtual machine and another one uh, is a marketing, is my workstation. It's very easy. You click a uh, random and uh, choose the uh, team random machines. You check everything is online. And if you have more than one virtual machine or other uh, machine for in your random form, you can add machine here. Click add machine and type add the IP more address. Virtual machine to help to increase the speed of the rendering. So you can add more virtual machines from the virtualization station? Yes. yes. Yeah, right. Here, click right. the team random to show you. And uh, this is the app that has been installed over the virtualized uh, the virtual machine and uh, we are accessing it actually from the desktop that we have a, a Windows uh, running OS in a, a virtual Machine. Yeah. Virtual machine. Yeah. And you can see they have two threads for rendering work. The left side is uh, my local workstation and the right side is the uh, virtual machine. So right now the video has been divided into two parts. One part is doing the rendering by the local. Another part is uh, rendering by the virtual machine inside the TS2888X. So, uh, so these green, two green uh, they are doing bars the, yeah. means the process of the rendering. Ah, okay. 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 So, the first one is the other side, and the second bar is from the TS yes. twenty eight. Right? Yes. Yes. And so if you have two virtual machines, you will have three bars. Right? Okay. okay. So the bars are dividing. It. Yeah. So you can think it is just like uh, from the video. Uh, uh, friend zero to uh, is that friend? Yeah. Okay. So from friend zero to forty, the rendering job is done by the workstation. Okay. From the forty to eighty, uh, the rendering job is done by the virtual machine inside the TS twenty eight eighty X. And you can see, uh, from the forty to eighty frames, it's faster, right? Yeah, it's much faster than the other one. Yeah, means. Uh, our TS2888 is faster than the workstation right now. Okay, in the meantime, uh, let me launch uh, After Effect. This is a 3D rendering. Yeah. Uh, I think some um, like um, the, uh, movie makers yeah, or 3D editors. game makers, okay. they, they need to have a lot of animation, right? Mm -hmm. So they will leverage this kind of uh, architecture. And actually, there are other uh, industries, just like um, some um, designers. Okay. Designers, they design your your house. Yeah, archi architecture. Yes, right, right. They also need this kind of uh, uh, tool help them to to make make those pictures like really real, right? So right now, uh, Sam is going to demo yeah. using the I Adobe. I, I, I forgot one tip. Uh, here you can see. Uh, if uh, do the all do the uh, random job, uh, the icon will change from green to brown, oh, okay. brown color. Yes. So you can confirm the status of the rendering. Okay. For two D renders, uh, we launch the Adobe After Effects uh, render engine on your virtual machines. So it's another render engine inside mm -hmm. the uh, virtual machine. It is for the 2D design. Uh, the software is called Adobe of, uh, After yeah. Effects. Yeah. 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 I suppose for 2D, it would be less power consumption than for 3D. Or it's almost uh, different usage. Uh, different usage, mm -hmm. yeah. all right. Uh, here, click the uh, watch folder. Here, remember to select the share folder on your NAS. Right 
I know you're accessing the files from the NAS and you're trying to run it in the Adobe After Effects where you're planning to do the rendering, the 2D, 2D rendering. Right? Yes, yes. All right. Actually, you sh you, the editor should do it in <laughs> different workstations. Okay. <laughs> okay. Then here you can see is a um, <coughs> YouTube uh, template. Yeah. This is very complicated, man. Looks the yeah. screen of the After Effects. This uh, is for yeah. the video editors. Yes. <laughs> very complicated. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I see another green bar there. So yeah. it's the same? No, it's no. just a preview. Oh, it's just a preview. Yeah, every, when everything down uh, here, you can check a random queue. Mm -hmm. uh, and check for oh, your job. These are materials, right? Yeah. Okay, so it's changed. You have to change your random setting from okay. the default value to multi machine settings. And the output model is, um, <coughs> is a multi machine sequence, sequence. And the output also remember to select your share folder on the NAS. Because of the storage, yes. better. you can do everything online. Yeah. Okay, and then click the dependency and the click file. Here, you can define uh, how many random machines you want to use and enable a uh, uh, watch folder render. Or, or you, if you want, you can change your random output folders. Cinema 4D. Okay. Okay. The random job is done. So the random job in Cinema 4D is actually finished because we yeah. left earlier to come yes. back. Yeah. See. You can see it's a different. Wow. Same person effect mm -hmm. um, on the this video. Yeah. And this is the result of the uh, after rendering. Okay. And we come back to the after effect, the render engine on the virtual machines. Uh, you can start start a random job. Yeah. Okay. You can check the show folders. Oh, so. Okay. There are a lot of files here. Yeah. A lot of content. A lot of materials. Create a new. You see from zero KB, the size. Oh, to, the size is getting. Yeah. All right. It's changing, right? It's changing the whole time. Okay. So this is real time. Okay. Yes, that's my demo. All right. Wanna go back to the slides? Yes. yes. All right. Okay. Amazing uh, usage of the twenty-eight GB index. Yep. Thank you, Sim. And I think uh, uh, Sim just demonstrated uh, how to leverage your TS twenty-eight ATS as a render form, no matter two D or three D. And now uh, I'm going to uh, talk about uh, acceleration, how to leverage the PCI slots in, in, in the NAS. Mm -hmm. And this, end, uh, this is an example for uh, uh, the PCI slot acceler uh, acceleration. And in this example, let's go back to the, um, uh, uh, the training stuff, okay? Right. Uh, actually in the training, uh, or let, uh, let's say in the deep learning, there are two parts of the whole process. The first part, you have to do the training and generate a model and then doing the inference. Mm -hmm. So normally in the training process, we leverage the GPU to accelerate uh, the, all the computing mm, stuff, right? Yeah. But in the inference part, uh, GPU is not a must. Okay. You can use, of course you can use G GPU. Yeah. And you can also use CPU or FPU, uh, FPGA yeah. card or v VPU. Mm -hmm. So just like what I mentioned before, uh, QNAP has provided a solution. And the solution includes TS2880X NAS. Yeah. And another one is Mustang V100. Okay. That is a, a VPU card. And of, of course, the third part is QTS. And in the QTS, we offer our customers an OWCT 
it's a tool, very useful mm -hmm. tool to help you to do the inference. Okay, so I will talk about the detail one by one. Okay, the first one must be uh, 100. Yep. It's a VPU and uh, it is powered by Intel Movidius uh, processor inside. VPU just like a vision accelerator and uh, it is a just like a special design CPU. So uh, CPU do the general purpose stuff, but this uh, Intel Movidius uh, VPU is doing something all related to the vision. Okay, and this is the architecture of this Mustang V100. Uh, uh, the dimension is just like a standard uh, uh, half high, half length, so it doesn't like a big GPU hard. So that also means uh, it's power economic, save more power. Actually, the card is around, I think, lower than 30 watt. But do you know a uh, normal GPU car? Uh, we, uh, when we use the big GPU car in the training, it is uh, around 251 oh, per car. So, man. yeah. And in this car, actually, we have eight Movidius GPU on top of the car. So it's a very, very powerful tool for, uh, for our customers. They want to do the inference acceleration. Okay, this is the Mustang V100. And another part is we have uh, NAS. We have a PCI adapter to help you to accelerate the process of the inference. And this is the tool. We provide OWCT. OWCT stands for Open Vino Workflow Consolidation Tool. Uh, the Open Vino is uh, provided by Intel. Uh, it's a deep learning tool for converting trend models into an inference service. Okay, so you have a trend model, yeah. but you cannot use it right right away. So by using the Open Vino, uh, uh, these tools, it can optimize your model and help you to deploy into your inference, become an inference engine. So, uh, in the uh, in the Open Vino, we already provide pre-trained models, which is provided by Intel. So, if you want to um, experience how the, the the result of the training, uh, uh, you you, uh, you can leverage the the whole QAI stuff and the GPU and do all the training process and then generate the model. But if you think you just want to experience and want to know uh, how how the inference look like, you can use the pre-trained model. You don't have to do the training model process. Okay. You can use the uh, pre-trained model, which is provided by the Intel. Okay, and also, also the Open Vino it is provided by Intel, so of course supports uh, Intel uh, FPGA and the VPU card. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to have a demo of this. Yep. Uh, OWCT. Okay, so we go to the demo. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Okay, here is the demo from Sam before. Okay, I'm connecting to the uh, TS2880X. Okay? okay. In the NAS, uh, just like uh, before, you can download uh, the Open Vino workflow consolidation tool in our app center. After downloading, and it's easy to to run everything. Uh, before, without this kind of tool, if you want to use the Open Vino, you have to maybe write write some configuration file. You have to use the command line to do a lot a lot of stuff. But with this o OWCT, you can just finish everything. Finish everything by the wizard, oh. and there are only three steps. Actually, the last step is summary. So two steps. Okay. The first step is uh, choose the model. Just like what I mentioned, you can use the pre-trained models, which is provided by Intel. And of course, if you have your custom model, you can choose this one. We will help you to build up, uh, to import your custom model and finish the rest of the process. Okay? And let's say we choose the pre-trained Intel model, and next day, Give a name of this this task. Let's say test, and choose the accelerator. You can use CPU 
or a VPU because in this NAS we already installed a Mask 10 V100 so you can see there is a VPU options here and click next summary create and you will see the test job is over here right. and there is a hyperlink then uh, if you really uh, uh, I already create uh, pre-create two tasks over here okay. so we can see the feeling of the um, uh, uh, inference process okay? okay let's say this one is doing the inference by the CPU and this one is doing the inference by uh, VPU okay let's see the CPU first click this hyperlink and you can upload your video the idea is just like this uh, we have a video upload into the NAS and then you will see there is a progress bar the system is trying to analyze all the frames in the video and mark those cars based on the train model yes based on the train model so if your train model is, uh, is something related to the human detection it, it, maybe it doesn't work here okay? the so <laughs> the, the pre-trained model can detect cars and objects okay the progress is just we use the CPU doing the, the analyst yeah. doing the inference yeah. okay so if you want to see the result just click the, this button you can see uh, all the cars are marked mm -hmm. okay and it takes here it takes around 37 seconds to finish all the all the stuff okay and this is the inference doing acceleration by the uh, CPU and we can check another one another one is um, VPU. VPU we can still upload the same video yeah. is this this is uh, uh yeah this is the same one okay yeah okay uh right now everything is done by the vpu the the progress bus here i think you can feel it's faster yeah, than it's the, the cpu and uh actually the test is not actually um fair because uh the uh precession here is fp16 but cpu doing the F uh, FP38 uh, uh, 32 okay but you can feel it takes only 14 seconds yeah. to finish the everything and still you can check the result here nice. okay so uh, this is just give our customer an idea um, you can leverage all kinds of acceleration car and uh, install them into the TS twenty eight eighty eight X, and this is an example. And of course, if uh, some of the customers they need to install other acceleration chronometer uh, encryption, something like that, maybe they can talk with us. Okay. They can introduce those cards to us, and we can figure out if we can help our customer to install that, or they can just simply do the uh, like a PCI pass through, pass through into the virtual machine. So the virtual machine can, le can leverage the PCI adapter directly. Okay. okay. So that's my demo. All right. So did we reach the end? Yeah. yeah. DS2888X. So yeah. we reached the end. We had three amazing demos on rendering. Two were on rendering 2D and 3D, and the yeah. last one on the inference. Mm -hmm. So just to make a short recap of what we've been talking today mm -hmm. is that we had in the first part the introduction of the TS2888X mm -hmm. itself mm -hmm. the hardware part and then we had uh, PM Sam introducing us to the rendering models and uh, on 2D and 3D mm -hmm. and also the last part where uh, senior PM David showed mm -hmm. us the uh, architecture of using QTS the cons uh, open video cons consolidation workflow yeah and uh, the Mustang VPU yes. and the TS2888X all this combination for a better inference AI training model mm -hmm. so yeah this is it for today and if you like this video or many other videos like this please go check other of those at the live.kinab.com and I'll see you next time thank you bye